space, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the starship Enterprise. Its five-year mission, to explore strange new worlds, to seek out new life and new civilizations, to boldly go where no man has gone before. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, quite a uh, far cry from uh, Priceline.com, but that was uh, William Shatner, of course. Star Trek, that's the Star Trek I grew up watching, not all the movies. Joining us now is Chris Ippy. He is professor at the University of Arizona, deputy head of the astronomy department, author of Beyond Our Future in Space. And there, ladies and gentlemen, is the book, Beyond uh, Our Future in Space. Hello, Chris. Hi, great to be on your show. Great to be with you. Who's your little friend uh, to your left over there? I was just keeping an eye on me, you know, making sure I don't violate the uh, prime director. <laughs> you didn't, he didn't come down to you from some, uh, some place unknown, did he? No, well, I, that's how I head off the alien questions. I just make sure I have my own alien in mind. <laughs> all right, let, let, so what, what is our future? First of all, you know, the more I hear and the more I read, you know, I'm, I'm convinced, I, I, I guess I'm convinced, that you know the people who know know so much uh, that there are other galaxies out there. There are there are other forms of life out there. Uh, they may have visited us. Do you believe that? Yes. I well, I don't know about the last part, but the life part is uh, very likely. Well, you I don't, don't mean I don't mean water. I don't mean my, you know uh, amoeba in a water pool of water. I mean walking, you know, thinking creatures. Right. So it's quite likely there are 20 billion habitable Earth-like worlds in the Milky Way, just one galaxy. And, and I agree that the likelihood that nothing interesting happened on them with billions of years for life to evolve, that's a pretty low probability. All right. So what is our future? I mean, uh, I mean uh, Obama has cut the space program. Uh, you know, I know we have, I, I couldn't even tell you what we have. Nothing exciting in my view has happened in a long time. Uh, they talk about people going to Mars, but that would take, you know, forever. So what, what is our future in space? Well, I don't want to start by being disappointed, but since you let off with Star Trek, I, I mean, our future, unfortunately, is not warp drives and traveling around the galaxy anytime soon. That, that's just too hard. But it doesn't mean there isn't something exciting on the horizon. Um, you know, the private sector, miniaturization, technologies that are only just starting to be used in space, they're going to transform the activity, make it a lot cheaper, make it easier to get up there, uh, broaden the base of people who've ever been in orbit or left the Earth. And it may take, you know, 10 or 15 years, but I think it's going to happen. What uh, is, I'm sorry to interrupt, go ahead. And, and you know, the Moon and Mars, uh, although they're not as riveting destinations, especially the Moon, it's like been there, done that. The, great, the Moon is a very great staging post for solar system exploration. So if you set up a Moon base, if you just pay the price tag to set up a base of operations, and then you maybe build a space elevator to get you well, out. That's what I wanted to ask you about. You took the words out of my mouth. What the heck is a space elevator? So it's one of those science fictional concepts that actually is now within reach. Um, it's it's interesting to describe because you've got a it's like an Indian rope trick. You've got to imagine this this cable, this super thin, super strong cable that just rises off the ground straight into space and is suspended there. Uh, and how it's suspended is you push it high enough up into space so that the spinning Earth sort of keeps it there um, in a balance. And what do but you do? You put you hook a rocket like a capsule onto it and it just goes in a straight line up. Well, the reason that it's such a great idea is that if you can build this this cable, which is the space elevator, you don't need rockets. I mean, the thing that's expensive about sending people into orbit or into space is the cost of all that rocket fuel that you just burn up to put this tiny payload into space. If you can construct the space elevator, you just put little elevator cars or crawlers going up and down, carrying as much stuff as you want. I'll tell you, too bad, Chris, I have a fear of elevators on Earth, so I doubt that I'd be a candidate for getting in one in space. But, uh, folks, the book is full of those kinds of things and those kinds of uh, ideas and adventures, and it's beyond our future in space. Chris, good to talk to you, sir. Yeah, good to talk to you, too. All right, too. thank you. All right, folks, up next, the Daily Closing Bell Report. But first... You know, we're bringing back our viewer call in segment. We do it here on the Steve Molesberg show. So if you want to weigh in on the issues of the day, you can't just, you know, call in or whatever when we're doing it. You have to reach out to us in advance. So why don't you do that now? Email us. Email us at 
Call Steve at Newsmax.com. Call Steve at Newsmax.com. Tell us how to reach you, your phone number, your name, all that stuff, and we'll get back to you because we want to hear from you. Don't go away.